Hi folks, today's Wednesday widget was on the DIY clamp series, but I realized we gotta have some machining. So, we had a customer ask us, can the Tormach 440 machine a stainless grade and titanium? And I honestly don't have a ton of experience with either of those materials, but fast forward, and they sent us a piece of S30V and a piece of 64 titanium. And here's the thing, from a horsepower standpoint, I'm not too concerned. The customer also sent some of these 1 8 inch four flute helical uh, end mills. So we know we don't have a power consumption problem, but what we've got to do is get speeds and feeds that work. Let's take a look at the cutting first for fun, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the recipes that I think worked.
If we take a look at the S30V, we can see here, great sidewall cut, great end cut. Important thing which we're going to talk about is we were making a chip. S30V um, is an exotic material in my opinion. It's a, I think, a center grade of stainless and there's um, more, you know, the more exotic and custom you get in these materials, whether it's been hardened or heat treated, the more you've got to pay attention to your speeds and feeds. But honestly, still went okay for a guy like me. It's my first time ever cutting it. The 6.4 Titanium, honestly, an even better, certainly a better uh, radial finish and the floor finish. The floor finish isn't superb, but um, well, I'm curious to see what you guys had to say in the comments below. Maybe this tool is more meant for you know, high quality uh, radial finishing and not floor finishing. Um, so how do we do the speeds and feeds? Well, again, we don't have a horsepower problem. When you're cutting with tools like this, what you've got to do is make sure you're taking a chip. People think small end mill, I need to do really high RPMs and really slow feeds. I swear they do that and as evidence, when the customer sent over what they had tried and they were breaking end mills and, rub and wearing them out, they were doing, let's plug it in here, this speeds and feeds Excel file by the way is from our Lakeshore Carbide speeds and feeds video series. So definitely take a look at that if you want to learn more about feeds and speeds. They were doing 3880 RPMs at 3.8 inches a minute or 3.5 so if I back this down to yeah they were taking like a less than one quarter of one thou chip load per tooth that's rubbing you're not giving the tool a chance to cut into the material and here's the real scary thing is a lot of times that'll look good at first because the tool basically can rub for a little while but you're generating huge amounts of heat you're going to wear out that edge and that tool is going to break and you're going to get really short tool life but again what's frustrating is while it did cut it looked it may at least have looked good let's use a more appropriate rule of factor never go below half a thou per tooth folks so let's start honestly i know we're going to be able to okay okay to start a little above that i happen to know that these helicals are pretty high quality tools so let's do seven tenths of a thou per tooth it's an eighth inch tool four flutes and i'm going to go slow now if this were a big tool three eighths half inch i would get those rpms down to like 400. why because people confuse a starting tool path or a recipe and a recipe that they want to start with but is a lot closer to a production or optimal load and if you want to take that risk or you can use a speeds and feeds calculator that'll help you get a faster or more aggressive cut to start with that's okay but sometimes you just want to start somewhere that works now on these small tools I'm okay going higher, but still, 1250 RPMs, that's really uh, slow in terms of surface feet per minute, 41, really slow, three and a half inches a minute. Whether that's a good feed or speed or not, I'm not 100% sure, but what I know is I'm not going to be rubbing. You can use programs like G-Wizard, um, and we're going to show another one here in a second that will help you determine uh, another really important thing, which will be the deflection on a small tool like this you don't have a ton of you know strength in the tool and so it's going to deflect but here's the thing i still want to take a full depth of cut and a thin width of cut coincidentally after these tools arrived i actually met a guy from helical at autodesk university he did a little presentation in this adaptive roughing strategy class and he showed us this milling advisor software that they get it's free you can download it um, it's only designed to, to work with their tools although if you load up their catalog and find a tool similar to yours you might get okay results but i went through and we've got the titanium up here and the titanium was easy i could pick the 64 grade i punched in the helical tool number and it spit us out a feeds and speeds that um was pretty close, a little more aggressive than what I had punched up here, but if you look, the difference was the inch per tooth. So if we just increase this to say one thou, and he's doing higher RPM, about double that. Look, you're not too far off. Now, my speeds and feeds in this Excel file, it's pretty primitive. It's what's been used for a long time, and it's gonna work pretty reliably with basic materials. Again, as you get into these more exotic modern materials, a program like Mill Advisor or, or any program that can recognize uh, the specific material you're using, absolutely 
go with that. Um, on that note, when you get into these materials, always remember that the material quality itself can matter. And I'm not an expert, but I've heard from friends who have had high quality material, high quality vendors where the material gets hard spots, it gets soft spots, and it has changes in it, and that can wreak havoc, especially on little tools. It's recommending a full axial depth of cut and a really thin width of cut. Awesome. Uh, we're using the high efficiency milling, which is okay because in Fusion 360 on this guy, we are using the adaptive roughing. That's exactly what it's for, maintaining that constant chip load as it goes around. If you double the chip load on one of these small tools as you dive into a corner, gonna snap. The last thing I'll mention, chip evacuation. Because we're taking a thin width of cut, we're, it's gonna be a lot easier to get that chip out of the gullet. You can see uh, we had the fog buster running. When I started, I had this stupid thing pointing the wrong direction. That's embarrassing, it was an early morning. My takeaways for you guys would be measure your run out. If you need to, put an indicator on that tool and measure it before you start cutting. Make sure it's dialed in okay. Make sure you got chip evacuation going on. Pay attention to deflection. Again, because we're using here the helical uh, speeds and feeds calculator, it tells us and we know it's an okay recipe. And then if you do have problems, don't make any assumptions about anything. Check your work holding, check your collets in the run out, check the material uh, quality, check the uh, end bill for um, any problems. These have a 10 thou radius, which I love on the corner, it increases the strength of the tool. All really good stuff, folks. So in the end, the recipe that we used was full depth of cut, um, about 0.0175 width of cut, and on the titanium, 2250 RPMs at 12.7 inches a minute, and on the stainless, 3200 RPMs at 9.25 inches a minute. Hope you enjoyed that uh, little Wednesday widget add-on, folks. Take care. See you soon.